Welcome back everybody. Thank you for visiting the YouTube channel for bestbiblecommentaries.com. In this video, I'm going to talk about the top five whole Bible commentaries based on aggregate academic reviews. Before I do that, I invite you to subscribe to my channel if you like seeing videos on biblical studies resources. Clicking the thumbs up button really helps me out on YouTube. I appreciate you considering that. And as always, feel free to leave a comment or ask a question down below. Also in the uh, description box down below the screen, I'm going to put links to each of these books, um, links to Amazon for each of these books. So I invite you to use those. And I'm also going to put a link to my uh, page on my website where I list the top 25 whole Bible commentaries. So if you're new to my channel, I like to try and organize books based on aggregate academic reviews and share a few of those reviews with you. Um, definitely let, you, let me know what you think of these five and if you have used them before and if you have benefited from them. Um, so in the, my process in this video is I'm going to count I'm going to start at number five and work my way down to number one. So number five whole Bible commentary is the International Bible Commentary with the general editor is F.F. Bruce. Now this uh, whole Bible commentary has several different cover designs. I believe that the current one is a white hardback cover design. And, um, but you just need to look for new, the new International Bible Commentary. I think the NIV Letters are, are much bigger on the current one and just look for the study, uh, the general editor being FF Bruce and you'll find the right one. So it's the same content, whatever the cover design is that you find. This whole Bible commentary was published in 1986 and it was very well reviewed at that time. And it's been a staple for a lot of pastors and a lot of uh, libraries for at churches and Christian colleges. Uh, it's a very solid, reliable uh, whole Bible commentary. It's 1,629 pages in length. The academic review that I would like to share that is representative of other reviews that I read on this volume is from the Southwestern Journal of Theology. Uh, this review is a little bit funny because the reviewer says, this volume is an exception to my usual disdain for one volume Bible commentaries. <laughs> so, <laughs> A little bit of a backhanded compliment. Um, some scholars in particular think that there are just so many limitations on one volume Bible commentaries that uh, maybe they can't be that helpful. But I think it just depends on your purpose. And for a lot of lay people and a lot of pastors, whole Bible commentaries are definitely beneficial. Um, I, I love them myself. Um, so I think there's a lot of a lot of uh, good things about them. But anyway, this particular reviewer just said that this is an exception to his usual disdain for one volume Bible commentaries. Uh, the things that he praised about this volume are the uh, some of the articles like the introductions to each testament, the introduction to the Old Testament and the introduction to the New Testament. So other than providing a passage by passage commentary on every book of the Bible, there are some articles sprinkled throughout including those uh, introductory articles to each testament. There's also introductory articles to each book. This reviewer didn't love that about this commentary, the, in the book introductions, um, because they just kind of scratch the surface. And I would liken it to book introductions in a study Bible where it's, it's pointing you in the right direction, but it's, it's not providing a lot of depth. And honestly, that's not really its intention. But nevertheless, this reviewer didn't like... Um, didn't like that the book introductions were so short in this commentary, but the conclusion is positive. The reviewer says that this commentary will help the pastor prepare and preach strong, direct biblical sermons. And that's what we would expect from a project that is that was headed up by F.F. F. Bruce. So if you don't know who that is, he's a very well-known, very well-respected uh, Bible commentator who's written several uh, excellent commentaries on individual books of the Bible. So this one's a, published in 1986, so however many years ago that was, 35 years ago or something. Um, it's starting to be, it's kind of a little bit of a classic. If a 35-year-old book could be a classic, that's that's kind of a one of the classics. All right, number four whole Bible commentary is the Bible Knowledge Commentary. Now, um, this commentary set is actually two volumes. There's an Old Testament volume that I'm not showing you in this video. Um, and then there's this New Testament volume. Um, and this is the reason why I didn't call this video top five 
one volume Bible commentaries because a couple of them that I'm showing you here are actually two volumes and this is one. So um, there's an Old Testament version which is bigger than this one and then there's this New Testament version. Now for a long time, for several years, this Bible commentary uh, had a different uh, cover design. Um, it was a hardback and the book jacket was um, mostly brown and I think it had yellow lettering. So you can usually find used copies of that version of this commentary much cheaper than the newer one. This cover design I think is only a few years old, um, but that could save you a lot of money and the content is the same. So um, just take that into consideration. So uh, the general editors for this series are John Wolford and Roy Roy Zuck. And so some of you might know that they are associated with Dallas Theological Seminary. And some of you might know that uh, because it's a resource from Dallas Theological Seminary, that there's a, a theological, certain theological perspective um, uh, found in these volumes, which is dispensational and premillennial. Um, with the Old and New Testament together, there's over 20 faculty members from Dallas Theological Seminary that uh, contributed to, to this set. Um, now, this set was, this two volume set was published in the mid 1980s. The Old Testament volume was published, or the New Testament volume was first, uh, published in 1983. And then the Old Testament volume was published in 1985. This New Testament volume is about 1,000 pages. The Old Testament volume is about 1,600 pages. So it's about 2,600 pages altogether. So for a whole Bible commentary, it is a lot of information, two column. And uh, so, so there's just more space and it's, it's easier to read. Um, the biblical text is in bold. And so it's just, it's really simple to use this, uh, use this commentary. And um, uh, people who aren't premillennial or dispensational can definitely use it. But I think that a lot of the, the users, a lot of the buyers of this set um, do fit within that, that theological framework. Uh, so the general review I have for this one is from the Chriswell Theological Journal. And he says that the Knowing the, the Bible Knowledge Commentary is highly recommended. For the layman, it can hardly be surpassed. Even Bible students and pastors who have other research resources would do well not to overlook this commentary for its concise treatments are helpful. So positive review from the Chriswell Theological Journal. By the way, the reviews for the first two reviews that I shared were both written um, when the volumes came out. So they were both written in the, in the mid 1980s. All right, moving on. Number three is the IVP Bible Background Commentary. And uh, once again, this is a two volume set. There is the Old Testament volume and then, or the New Testament volume and then the Old Testament volume. The New Testament volumes is the only one I'm going to show in this video. And uh, the author is Craig Keener. Now, if you know Craig Keener, you know, you're aware that uh, he is a prolific Bible commentary writer and extremely well reviewed. He's mostly writing standalone commentaries right now, but, um, uh, but you can find his commentaries and other uh, in some series as well, but just uh, just uh, receives excellent reviews, and he's working within his strengths for sure when he is contributing or writing this New Testament volume in the IVP Bible Background Commentary set. So the subtitle says that uh, the information in the commentary pr it provides information on the cultural background of every verse in the New Testament. Well, that's Keener's strengths. Um, that's, that's what he does. That's what mostly his commentaries are about, and um, it's not only what he does, he does it very well, according to a wide variety of reviewers and a wide variety of users of his biblical studies resources. So I'm always excited when there's a new Keener uh, commentary published. Um, so this is a passage by passage commentary, and the, the comments are narrower than some of the other whole Bible uh, commentaries that I'm showing you, because um, um, by design, this has a narrower focus. It's focused on the background. It's, so it's fo focused on history, um, society, and culture of the background of every book of the Bible. So you could actually pair this with one of the other whole Bible commentaries that I'm showing you and get an even fuller picture of, um, of a passage or, or book of the Bible. So uh, the Old Testament volume 
is um, it started off as uh, the back, I think it was called the Bible background commentary on Genesis through Deuteronomy. I, it, it covered only Genesis. I mean, yeah, it covered only the Pentateuch or the Torah. Um, and then IVP turned that book into the Old Testament, um, the Old Testament volume in this larger series, the Bible background commentary series. So I remember John Walton is, was involved in that. And, um, uh, there was a few, few editors. Uh, I can't remember them all off the top of my head, but, uh, very well reviewed. So, um, the Old Testament volume is, is 832 pages. The New Testament volume is 816 pages. So about, uh, 1600 pages altogether. Um, the print's a little bit smaller in these though. So <laughs> take that into consideration, but that's, again, it's a lot of material. So a couple of reviews on this one. First one from the uh, Journal for the Evangelical Theological Society. The reviewer says, this is not written with the scholarly community in mind, meaning it's for lay people, it's for pastors. Uh, the reviewer says that relevant background information is listed by chapter and verse for select passages in each book in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. Um, and he said, it's a little, the reviewer says it's comparable to a study Bible, but I, I would just say that there's a lot more information than just a study Bible. But if you think about the, the level, um, kind of the reading level that a study Bible is written at, I, I do think that is comparable, but you know, study Bibles, they don't have that much information <laughs> in their notes section. So, um, so good review from Jets. The other journal is from the Presbyterian. Uh, he also compares the notes in this commentary to a study Bible. He says that it excludes almost all comment on context, theology, and devotional application, which is correct. Um, this, this volume or this set does exclude those things, but it's by design. It's for people who are looking for uh, background information on history customs, traditions, culture, society, so on. Uh, his conclusion, this is in the Presbyterian, the conclusion is, uh, I heartily commend this book. Teachers, pastors, and students of the Bible will find it immensely helpful. Number two. The Baker Illustrated Bible Commentary, edited by Gary Burge and Andrew Hill, both well-known commentators. This volume was published in 2012. It is 1,630, uh, 1,635 pages in length. And the reason why this volume stands out from the other five is because of the pictures and the images. Now, there's so many pictures and images, It's um, which visual learners, visual learners, you will love this. Because there, there are so many charts and graphs and full color pictures, and um, it's it's really a beautiful um, commentary. And the the paper stock is a little bit thicker, a little bit higher quality than you normally find in commentaries. Feels a little bit uh, glossy, I guess. I don't know if that's the right word, but um, it's just very. It's a very high quality resource. Now. There are so many pictures in here. I think it's fair to say that you're not you're not getting as much content. Um, there's a security sticker. Um, you're not getting as much content, but you know that's probably not a big concern for someone who's going to use this commentary. This would be excellent for lay people. I think pastors would do fine with it as well. I I use it to get ideas for images. So if I'm teaching on Zechariah, for example, and I have a like a PowerPoint or something, I'll go and see what image they had and I'll use that. I'll steal images, not steal, but you know, get ideas for images um, from this commentary. So, but very good commentators. Um, Matthew uh, was written by Janine Edwards, very good commentator. James R. Edwards writes Mark, very good commentator. So a very well-known list of conservative evangelical scholars contribute to this commentary. Uh, Thomas Schreiner on Luke. So some excellent names associated with this project. So I've said in other videos that um, I think this, if someone doesn't have a commentary, they don't have any, this might be a really good place to start. Um, 
and um, I think this would be the number one choice for lay people, probably, most lay people, unless they're pretty well read. Um, so th th there are not a lot of academic reviews on this one because it's not as academic in nature as the other volumes that I've showed you. It's a little bit more on the introductory side. So, but there are a few. Um, a couple that I'll share with you. One is from Christianity Today magazine back when they, I don't I don't know if they still do uh, book reviews. Uh, haven't got that magazine for a few years, but they used to do quite a few. Uh, the reviewer says it's rare to see this combination of deep scholarship, quote unquote deep scholar. I, I wouldn't say there's deep scholarship in this one, but uh, there's some scholarship. Um, anyway, <laughs> enough about my comments on this uh, reviewer's comments. Uh, he says, it's rare to see this combination of deep scholarship, clear prose, and engaging images, all of which help us hear afresh the Bible's message for us today. Also, Philip Graham Ryken, very well-known pastor, and, um, well, he was a pastor, and now he's a university president, um, but very well-reviewed commentary, commentary writer, says about this volume that it's evangelical by conviction, um, it gives ordinary Christians, that's, I'm, I'm saying lay people. He says ordinary Christians, gives ordinary Christians complete and reliable comment on every passage in the Bible. And he likes that it provides a Christ-centered reading of the Old Testament. So uh, kind of reading between the lines, he's saying it's, it's more for lay people than it is for pastors or scholars. All right. Number one is the New Bible Commentary, 21st Century Edition, edited by Wenham, Motier, Carson, and France. A who's who of commentary writers. Now, sometimes in my videos, I will tell you things like, um, you can get an older edition of a particular commentary that I'm showing you because it's just been rebranded or the cover designs just changed. So it doesn't matter. Go find a used copy for a cheaper price because, um, the content is exactly the same. I want to be clear. That is not the case with this commentary. The, the well-reviewed version of this commentary is the fourth edition that's the one that I'm showing in this video. This is the fourth edition of this commentary. What you want is the one that was published in 1994, and you want these editors. So um, these editors were not involved. Well, not all of them were involved. Uh, I don't know. I don't think any of them were involved in the previous editions. So, but if you find this cover design, um, it might have even had a different, the earlier versions might have even had like Erdman's Bible commentary or something like that. So what you need is a new Bible commentary with these editors, uh, Wenham, Motier, Carson, France. Again, I'm putting the link in the description box, so feel free to use that. I'll connect, I'll connect it to Amazon using the exact ISBN. Um, and I believe this is the only one that says 21st century edition, but again, it's published in 1994. Um, the target audience for this is pastors. I think lay readers who are used to reading biblical studies resources will do fine with it, but there's more biblical scholarship in this interaction with modern biblical scholarship in this than in the other books. What I've said in other videos is that this is the best one, best whole Bible commentary for lay people. If you're just starting out, this is the best option for pastors. And I think scholars will even, would even utilize this volume as well. Um, couple of reviews. The first one from Southwestern Journal of Theology. This volume combines an evangelical commitment to the Bible as the Word of God with top-notch scholarship, something that one volume Bible commentaries do not often achieve. He continues, this book will be useful to teachers, pastors, students, and interested church members. So by church members, he's he's meaning what, what I say is lay people. Um, with some lay people, I don't know, maybe this would be okay as a first resource that they got. Um, but I would just describe it as mid-level. So just be aware of that. It might just take you a little bit. If you're not used to reading this kind of material, it might take you longer to, to wade through some of the, um, passages and explanations. Second academic review is from the master's seminary journal, um, which is the school associated with John MacArthur. 
He says, with so many authors, there are some diverse perspectives. Okay, so um, I wanted to try and find, it's only kind of a critical, it's more of an observation than a criticism, I think, but it's something to be aware of if you're considering this commentary. So I'll just contrast it with this one from Dallas Theological Seminary. All of the authors have a similar theological perspective and those who agree with it like like it for that reason. This commentary is different, and so you're going to get some different theological uh, viewpoints. So, for instance, uh, Daniel is written from uh, is written by um, Sinclair Ferguson, and the Revelation part is written by George Beasley Murray. So, in other words, you have an amillennial perspective for Daniel, and you have a premillennial perspective of Revelation. So. That's just an example, but you're going to get some different um, theological perspectives when you use this commentary. Now, let me just... The the contributors to this commentary are just amazing. It's just uh, it's a who's who of Bible scholars. And um, let me just find that page where they list uh, those names. Um, I'm just give you a couple of names that some of you might be familiar with. Uh, D.A. Carson, of course, um, T. Desmond Alexander, uh, Sinclair Ferguson, like I said, Peter H. Davids, uh, I. Howard Marshall, Colin Cruz, Derek Kidner, uh, Peter O'Brien, Leon Morris, uh, David, o uh, David, uh, or sorry, Peter O'Brien, uh, writes, the Colossians and Philemon. So I talked about in a different video that that volume has been discontinued, but here's where to get some of Peter O'Brien's thoughts. <laughs> um, Douglas Stewart, Bruce Waltke, uh, Gordon Wenham, one of the editors. Um, so just a pretty amazing uh, list there, but there's different theological perspectives representative, re represented. So now back to the Master's uh, Seminary Journal review. Um, he says, the reviewer says there's three benefits to this commentary. One is that all the authors have a high view of scripture. Number two is that the authors interact with biblical scholarship. It's probably going to be more helpful to scholars than pastors, especially since it's a little, the information is even dated now because it was 1994. Um, but there's some interaction with biblical scholarship. And number three, uh, he says, quote, this commentary is foundational to the more detailed evangelical commentaries on individual books of the Bible. So where I think he's going with that is it's, it's great to have this as a kind of a foundational resource to your library and then have other um, commentaries on individual books of the Bible. So very common for pastors and teachers. I've done this myself in preaching and teaching where I will I will use this as kind of a first step and then I'll use some other individual commentaries um, after I, I read kind of an overview perspective in, in this book. So that's just, that's just an idea. Okay, so that's number one. So uh, let me know what you think and uh, which volumes of these have you have used. And um, uh, in a future video, I'm going to give you some, I'm going to show some other options for whole Bible commentaries as well, just to give you a little bit bigger picture. But I thank you for watching this video and uh, thank you for watching and thank you for uh, visiting my website as well.